Um, we've got another question. Free speech uh, is on the agenda tonight. The question is from George Fernandez. Members of the panel, what are your views regarding the Greens leader, Richard Di Natale's move to ban controversial right-wing commentator Milo Yiannopoulos from attending Parliament House later this week? Kate McClymer, I'll start with you. Look, I don't think it's a good idea to ban somebody. Um, having said that, I think um, Milo Yiannopoulos is you know, a chameleon of confected contempt, and I think he, he stands for <laughs> he stands for nothing. And um, you know, this is somebody who's actually been banned from Twitter uh, last year for inciting um, you know racist comments. He's had his book deal canned earlier this year for suggesting that it's all right for adults to have sex with 13-year-old children. And then he went further and said, um, those children who later, 20 years later, revealed this, they were just whinging, spoiled brats. So I, I just think that if you are going to have free speech and um, allow him to speech, then you are also allowed to have uh, people protesting about the kind of um, terrible things that he says. Eric Betts, um, is this the sort of person who should be speaking in the federal parliament? Oh, well, not in the federal parliament uh, per se, but building. in the building. Yeah. Uh, yes, because I believe in free speech. Uh, I must say, uh, to put it politely, he would have to be an acquired taste. Uh, I'm not sure that I would take myself along to listen to him, but uh, look, in a free country that celebrates uh, free speech, uh, sometimes you have to put up with those uh, sort of uh, people. And, uh, Eric, I mean, you just heard uh, what he purportedly said about uh, people having sex with 13 year olds mm. or even mm. younger. Um, can you actually count um, someone like that oh, look, uh, getting a platform in the uh, people's house? I find it uh, hugely distasteful, some of the things that he said, but might I add, uh, Professor Peter Singer has uh, put forward certain views that I also find exceptionally distasteful. And uh, look, in a free country with free speech, you allow people to uh, put their views and... Uh, at the end of the day, with an educated discussion within our community, hopefully people make up their minds. Lisa Singh, what do you think? Oh, well, firstly, I'm just a bit perplexed by Eric kind of revealing Peter Singer and Milo Yiannopoulos in the, in the one. I just can't see that being the case. But uh, look, I think... What? I Why think not? he is... Uh, I th <laughs> <laughs> have, have you read his I, I think, I think Have you read his works? Mr Yiannopoulos is a snappily dressed whack job. Seriously, <laughs> he is just, you know, completely attention seeking, um, you know, desperate to just try and get some kind of shock factor out of, out of the media airwaves. And the sooner he leaves Australia and goes back to, I think, the US, the better. But look, so do you want we've all been invited. Do you want him banned from I've speaking? In, do you want him banned from speaking in the Parliament House, though? That's really the nub of the question. And that's what the I've Greens been invited doing. tomorrow, as is, I think, Eric and all of us. Um, and I certainly won't be going. So, I, I, you know, for the, for the very few that turn up, let them do that. But uh, he certainly won't be um, getting my attention. Simon Bruni. Um, no, I think it's a very bad idea to ban him from coming. I think that any member of parliament, whether they be in the lower house or the upper house, is entitled to sponsor speakers to come and speak to the parliament. Um, and I think, as Eric has said, there are some pretty controversial speakers on both sides of the debate. So I think... Why would he be invited in the first place? That's the thing that puzzles me. It's, oh, he seems like an odd person. Our Senator Lyon. Senator Lyon. Uh, uh, okay. right. He, right. He's the right. one that uh, extended the invitation. All right, so... I mean, look, I, I think, you know, at, at the end of the day, too, there's a, there's a question about what it means to live in a, in a free society. And one of those things means that you have got to deal with people who have some really difficult, problematic, controversial views. Like uh, fat people should be deported. Exactly. I mean, Feminism this is, is sure, an answer. Sure. Yep, exactly Being right. Muslim is a lifestyle choice. Never trust lesbians. But, I mean, I all, mean... Of those, all of those are positions that are refutable. So I think that the position should be, if you're brave enough and courageous enough and you believe in what you believe in strongly enough then you should be able to come out and say, you know what, you're wrong, and this, mm. this is why you're wrong, and here's the evidence t saying why you're wrong. I, I just don't... I, know, I, I have does, never does, understood why it is that people speech, are so afraid of some of these ideas. But does free speech allow you to make these outrageous comments? Like, um, birth control makes women unattractive and obese. But, I mean, they're, they're obviously stupid, though. So, I, I mean, know, but, but I mean... Like, can't you, can't you but, come back and say they're stupid? Like, what you're saying no, is... No, but dumb. some of them are more dangerous than that. Some of them but are... But they're not, though. I mean, because... No, 
mean, look, it, it, it only this dangerous week, if you only think that someone week, is going to... he was on commercial radio in Sydney saying, um, well, of course, even though I'm gay, I wouldn't employ gay people because they're really lazy. But what you're this saying... This is a blanket statement. Or what can I saying? vouch for the fact that is incorrect? <laughs> <laughs> I have a what? very good staffer that is anything but uh, lazy. <laughs> uh, Gillian, can I... Uh, yeah. Let's bring Gillian in. What, so yeah. where do you stand? The free speech yeah. element of this is, is the core of the question. <laughs> Should it, people it, like him be allowed to speak in any forum, yes. no matter what they say, pretty much? Look, I, th I think the point is that, there, of course, there's a right to freedom of speech. But there's a, there's a breach of... You can abuse the right to freedom of speech. And societies have to determine where that abuse line starts. And we know that it starts in our legislation in 18C. If you effectively abuse someone in the public arena because of their race, we decided 20 years ago as a democratic country that that was the line. You couldn't do that. And we could possibly add to that with, with religion and other, other, other uh, elements. But I think with, in these cases, and I, you know, I sort of came up from the, 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 the 60s when, when uh, you know, all sorts of books were, were being banned and you, you, could, you couldn't get uh, the great classics because they were banned uh, in Victoria where I grew up. Um, I think that when you, when you ban somebody, you actually give them oxygen and air and you bring attention to them. So although I, I do agree with the points that the, the, the remarks this man is making are completely unacceptable, um, and in fact, he, he really, I think, uses the camouflage of being gay and a Jew, etc., as a means of, of, of actually allowing himself or licensing himself to make these comments. Um, I, I think that the better thing to do is not actually to ban him, but just let him... Um, fizz out. It, 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 the, the public will make their own judgments about this man.